Hi, welcome back. Today's video is a slight rant or peeve. Um, a patient this week uh, came in with, I think probably the heaviest layer of foundation I've seen in a long time. And they had acne and were very troubled by their skin and I completely understood the situation. Um, but what was most upsetting about the heavy coverage foundation was that there was a thick blanket of product all over the skin, literally um, painted on uh, so heavily that when I actually tried to remove it to examine her skin, I had to stop. I couldn't even fully examine her skin because there was so much um, makeup still, even though I'd been uh, you know, wiping away with some micellar water and a piece of gauze. And, you know, Obviously there was the acute problem of the acne to sort out, but there was so much else to sort out in terms of the way she was approaching her skin. And it's not to say that makeup isn't a very important tool in your acne management strategy. It's vital, but it's getting the right products. So I was able to guess which brand of foundation she was using. That's um, how ubiquitous it's become. And it made me reflect on the foundations that I haven't reviewed. Um, I did a, a recent review of foundation sticks for high coverage, um, but I thought about all the products I've kind of shoved in the back of the cupboard and avoided doing a review. And I thought, you know what? This isn't about singling out one particular brand. This is about looking at the category, which is long wear foundations, high coverage, long wear foundations specifically. And there is a reason why I have had not a single <laughs> praise video to um, direct towards this category. I think there is a real problem here. And there, you know, there are genuine reasons for this. Um, and I, I revisit it by actually looking at how one of these products looks on my skin and how it was as an experience to try to remove it. So the first problem I have is the aesthetic finish. Even if you have terrible acne, I still believe fundamentally you're better off applying a light coverage base all over and higher coverage product just where you need to and I do think foundation sticks are the best designed um, tools for that. Um, that or a, um, a very matte finish concealer that's very buildable and has high coverage. Um, when you apply a heavy layer of um, long wear foundation that's high coverage all over, you're often concealing parts of the skin that simply do not need it. Um, and the important way to make up breakout prone skin is to make the most of the bits that don't have acne. And for many women whose acne trouble can be terrible down here, but this can be pristine, it's important to let that shine through because that tricks the eye of the beholder into believing your skin is nowhere near as bad as it might be. So NARS Radiant Tinted Moisturizer all over or Lemcom Tint Miracle or Sheer Glow, um, one of those light bases all over and then coverage on the lower face just what you need. Um, so avoiding using high coverage product all over is the first step to avoiding people thinking that you have a problem all over. So I don't like that blanket coverage because you cannot see the quality of real skin underneath. And I think we should always be celebrating good skin in its natural state where possible. So that's the first thing, the aesthetic finish. The next thing is the inherent nature of these sorts of products. They just tend to cause trouble when it comes to acne prone skin. So the process of comedogenesis or forming clogged pores. That's a real problem if you're acne prone, and let's face it, as many as 40% of 20-somethings are, 30% of 30-somethings are, um, overall 40-50% of women will have some type of acne at some point in their lives. So why use cosmetics that might make that problem worse? The next thing is the removal of the product. I am cynical. Any product that requires me to buy two cleansers, not one, to get it off, I'm cynical. That's someone making me buy two products because they want my money. Um, I had to use a regular gentle cleanser, the type that I recommend in clinic all the time. I had to use it three times. So even when I'm using one cleanser, I'm still using three times the amount of product as somebody else who's using a lighter coverage product that comes off with a single cleanse. And I always ask people to think critically. If you're having to double cleanse or triple cleanse, don't look at your cleansers look at your makeup practices and adjust those first. Okay, so I have a problem with that. Needing more than one cleanser to get it off, there's something wrong here. 
When I used the cleanser three times to remove this foundation, it left my skin in a state. I was red, I was irritable, um, I swore I could see a few more bumps just from the mere act of friction required to get this stuff off. Um, I, my skin wasn't happy and it was drier than it would usually be and that's using a gentle non-foaming cleanser. The fact that you might have to use an oily balm to dissolve this stuff and then use a foaming cleanser to get it off to remove the residue not only of the makeup but also of the oily cleanser to my mind is simply the wrong way to go about making your skin um, in its best state. And then the final aspect of this whole cleansing palaver to get this stuff off is that my skin's just not happy when I overdo the cleansing process. I'm naturally breakout prone and for me, the less I do to my skin when it comes to cleansing, the better. So if you're having to amp up your cleansing process by using multiple cleansers, maybe you're having to use a flannel, a brush, um, I don't know, uh, you know, a scraping device, whatever it is to get the stuff off. And I mean, you know, this is a very real thing. These, these things, they stay, they are tenacious. Um, that disturbs your barrier function. In acne sufferers, that also makes your, your tendency to acne more brittle and more prone to breakouts. So there's nothing good to say here, in my opinion. Um, I, you know, maybe you would use it if you were getting married somewhere super hot and you were really worried about things shifting around and you didn't have a makeup artist to help you. But it's kind of the only situation where I can think of where you would desperately need a makeup product to stay put to such an extent. In real life, I just think you're so much better off working with light base, um, um, a buildable but removable high coverage product that you can tote around, that you can top up, that you can blot, um, and you can still work with a base like that through the day. Um, yes, it's a little more hard work, but it's just so much more flattering. It's so much kinder to your skin, and it's much more kind to your pocket. Um, that's my feeling about long wear foundations. I have a feeling this is going to be a very polarizing video. Probably lots of you telling me I know nothing about makeup. So be it. Bring it. Bye for now.